We are covering 1-9, which is Introduction to Parent Functions. We're going to identify parent functions from graphs and equations. All right, so what is a parent function? It's the simplest function with the defining characteristics of the family. The functions in the same family are transformations of their parent functions. So we're going to actually, throughout the year, go over in depth uh, for most of these parent functions that we're going to see today. And as it says, there's a basic function, and then you can see, make an infinite number of equations from that basic function, and all they do is define different transformations, which we looked at the last time. So parent function f of x equals x squared. This is the parent function for quadratic equations, which we should be famo somewhat familiar with. A transformation then would look like this. So notice we still have a variable, we still have a squared, so it's a quadratic, but we've introduced a transformation here, which we'll later figure out is a, a shift left by two. But it's still, it, this is, it's still a quadratic function. It's just been transformed. So these are the parent functions that we're, we need to understand. This is the family name, constant function, linear, quadratic, cubic, and square root. So this is the rule or the equation for the basic parent function, f of x equals c, linear f of x equals x. So these are the most basic function, function equations for this type that you can get. f of x is x squared, f of x is x cubed, and f of x is the square root of x. These are what the, gra the parent graphs look like. So they've just drawn one for the constant, but c is going to be some number. Example, this one looks like, oops, this one looks like it might be x equals 1, where 1 is your constant. So the value, sorry, not x equals 1, f of x equals 1. Value of f of x or y never changes. Linear function. So this is your a direct variation function, you might remember, but um, passes through the origin, and so the y-intercept is 0, slope is 1. Quadratic is our parabola. Cubic is, I like to call this a squiggle, so it's a graph with this squiggle here. And then square root looks like a sideways half parabola. Domain, what are the possi possible values or input values for the function? So look at what the graph does along the horizontal axis. Are there any restrictions? None here. So this is a fancy R. It's hard to see, but this is all real numbers. And I like to, I like to do it with t double lines and an R. Are there any restrictions here based on the horizontal axis? Well, the graph continues to go out in all directions, so all, its domain is all real numbers. Same with parabola. Whoops. It continues to stretch out both negative x and positive x directions. Same with cubic, but look at square root. Square root never goes over here, so the domain for square root is going to be x greater than or equal to zero, because it's never negative. Why? Because we, no, we don't have real numbers that are negative square roots. What about dom the domains? Well, we're going to look at the values, the y values that we see. Here, the only value that y can take on is the value of the constant. What about this one? Well, it's going to go in both positive and negative y directions forever, so it's all real numbers. Look at this one y never becomes negative, so the range for this is going to be y greater than or equal to zero. Again, no restrictions on this. And here, again, y is never negative. Since x is never negative, y is never going to be negative, so domain or range is going to be y greater than or equal to zero. And this is the point where they intersect the y-axis. So it's x-coordinate's always zero in that case for the parent function. The only one that doesn't intersect at the y-axis at zero, 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 is this constant function. Okay, identify the parent function for g and 
from its function rule, then, I, then graph g on your calculator and describe what transformation of the parent function it represents. So you can do it on calculator or on a sheet of paper. X minus x, or f of x equals x minus 3, which rule does that most closely look like? Well, I'm sorry, g of x equals x minus 3. It looks like this one, which is linear. If you graph it on your calculator, it's going to look like this. And what you'll notice, we look at it based on the x or the y, x and y intercept. We notice that the y intercept is moved 3. So you can say two, one of two transformations. It's either moved right 3, is that right, or down 3. No, actually left 3 or down 3. So they s represent it as three units down. That might be the easiest way to look at it. All right, g of x equals x squared plus 5. You probably notice with the x squared is going to be a quadratic function, is the parent function. If you graphed it, it looks like this. What happened to it? It moved up five units. Pretty soon we're going to be able to look at the equation without graphing and figure out what the transformations are. All right, you identify the parent function for g and graph it on your calculator. To describe the transformation. So x cubed plus 2. All right, graph the data from the set of ordered pairs. Describe the parent function and the transformation that best approximates the data set. So here's our equation. Our, not our equation, our table. If we graph it, so it's clearly a parabola, so the parent function is going to be quadratic. What kind of transformation took place? So the quadratic parent function passes through 1 and 1, 1, 1, and 2, 4. So instead of doing, so if you look at this, we don't go 1, 1, we go 1, 3. 2, 12. What change is that? Well, here it tells us. This is 3 times 1. This is 3 times 4. So that means it seems to be a vertical stretch by 3 because, and let me write it down. So the initial, original quadratic. Zero, zero. 1, 1, 2, 4. Transformed is 1, 3, and 2, 12. And you can see that, what did I do? The x didn't change, but the y changed by multiplication of 3. So it's going to be a vertical stretch of 3. All right, you try this one with this uh, table. Graph it and see what the parent function is and what you think the transformation is. Okay, consider the two data points 0 and 0, 1. If you plot them on a coordinate plane, you might think they are part of a linear function. In fact, they belong to each of the parent functions. So not, we're not looking at constant, and actually we don't look at constant, I don't think, most of the rest of the year. So these are the ones we're going to concentrate on, and you can see these two points belong in all of our parent functions, and, th and that helps you well, sometimes it hurts you, sometimes it's going to help you. All right, graph the relationship from year to sales in millions of dollars and identify which parent function describes it, then use the graph to estimate the cumulative sales when cumulative sales reach $10 million. What, is the, what are the domain and range? So here's the data. We're going to graph it. One, two, three, four, five. And we can see, knowing what the parent function is, which it pretty much looks like it's a parabola, we can plot a probable continuous line graph in between all those points to give it a smooth, as it says, we want a smooth curve. So a parent function looks like quadratic. Step three, estimate when we reach 10 million. Well, we're going to use our curve. 10 million is right here. When is that? That is about 4.3, 4.4 years. 4.5, they say. OK. So I guess if I'd made a straight line. What's our domain? 
well, what values can our x take on? Well, we can't have negative years. So it's going to be greater than or equal to zero. And in terms of our range, we can't have negative money. Well, you can, but we're going to presume not. So it's also going to be greater than or equal to zero. All right, I think that wraps this lesson up. Here is your homework. Please bring questions to class.